Hello there. The financial markets are increasingly determining the economic course of the United Kingdom. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak stressed on Monday how important it was to meet the expectations of international markets because confidence in British economic policy has been quite shaken. The Prime Minister and his Finance Minister, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Jeremy Hunt, are wringing their hands trying to pick up the shards left by Sunak's short-term predecessor, Liz Truss, during her chaotic term in office. The costs are likely to be immense and Hunt will reveal exactly how high this Thursday. Then the Chancellor of the Exchequer presents his financial plan. Cornerstones are already becoming known. Instead of radical and not counter-finance tax cuts, as in the case of Truss, the government is now taking the opposite path, contrary to its conservative ideology. The tax burden is already higher than it has been in 70 years. Especially the wealthier should pay more, as Hunt indicated. For example, the threshold for the top tax rate should drop from £150,000 to £125,000 in annual income. That would affect about 246,000 people, according to an analysis by auditor Moore Kingston Smith for the Times newspaper. But even low income earners are not exempt. We all have to pay more taxes, I'm afraid, Hunt said recently, urging the population to sacrifice. Prime Minister Sunak has now announced that the primary goal is to get public finances in shape. And this is urgently needed. The budget deficit is estimated at around £40 billion. It is therefore expected that Hunt will not only raise taxes, but also cut public spending on health. That means, for example, that the NHS will be worse off. The NHS health service is already on the verge of collapse. But Sunak and Hunt want to avoid a prolonged recession, as predicted by the Bank of England. Inflation has recently risen to f quite more than 10%, and this is costing the state money as spending on social services and pensions is increasing. Hunt had been appointed by Trust to succeed the hapless quasi Quateng and immediately set about retracting his announcements. That didn't prevent the Prime Minister from leaving quickly, though, but the situation has a little bit stabilized since then. The pound paired losses as long-term government bond yields fell again, but the markets remain nervous because of Truss and Quateng's adventurous financial course, the many property owners have to pay significantly higher mortgage interest rates now. The National Institute of Economic and Social Research it, that's a think tank, estimates that by April 2024, one in five households will have little or no savings. Sunak was now deliberately optimistic. The Chancellor of the Exchequer has said that part of our job is not only to restore stability to the system, which we will do, but also to lay the foundations for recovery and economic growth. That's what the Prime Minister said. Then the government could tuck, tuck, tuck taxes, no, cut taxes again and support public services. But doubts remain that this will soon be possible. As the newspaper Financial Times reported on Monday, the bad economic situation threatens to take on tens of billions of pounds more debt than previously thought. So not 40 or 60 would be thought. The OBR, the Office for Budget Responsibility, estimates that loans of almost £100 billion will be needed in the 2026-27 financial year. In March, OBR had estimated new debt for the period at £31.6 billion. Half of the higher loans are attributable to significant increased costs for debt servicing. The rest is due to a weaker economic outlook, which is hurting tax revenues. Great Britain is threatened with an economic vicious circle and probably the most damaging recession that, that has been there in the last 100 years. Even if the numbers were higher in 2008, the situation is different now. And I'll see you in my next video. I'll be back.